For friends, Kayla here with Docs Design, a branding studio that breathes life into your brand's vision and mission. Our whole thing is taking your impact, your story, your personal brand, and bringing it to life through the power of visual storytelling. And a huge part of that is color. And if you can't tell, we love color over here at Docs Design. We are not scared of color. We do not shy away from color. And that is probably one of the number one questions that we get when it comes to branding is how to create a brand color palette. And today we're gonna to share with you guys just how you could start with a successful brand color palette. Um, maybe you're just starting a brand. Maybe you're looking to refresh a brand. Maybe you are rebranding yourself. We're gonna help you guys out. We're gonna tell you guys how we create color palettes for our clients. Now, I'm gonna walk you through four steps when it comes to picking a color palette. So go ahead, get those pens, get those notebooks, write it on down, or you can watch this video over and over again. That's the power of uh, videos, if you guys have this to reference forever. So, step one when it comes to a color palette. Before we pick colors just by picking like what our favorite color is or all my competitors are doing blue so I want to pick blue we want to make sure we have the foundation for the brand so if you haven't watched our why brand is important why brand identity our brand 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 videos you're definitely going to want to watch that because we want to have a good handle of who we are as a brand if we are a fun party planning brand we're not gonna wanna have like muted black and white colors. We're gonna wanna have fun colors that are eye-catching. Maybe you're a natural and organic brand. Probably picking neon colors is not the best for you. We're gonna wanna go the more muted route. So before we actually dive into the three steps of picking your color palette, we're gonna wanna make sure we know who we are as a brand so we can set some parameters on ourselves. So if you don't already, watch that video, figure out who you are as a brand, write down your brand tone words, your brand vision words, or as we like to call them, your brand vibe words. Are you fun? Are you edgy? Are you natural? Are you organic? Are you modern? Are you trendy? Really write down who you are as a brand. And that's going to help you with these next three steps. Boom. Step number two. Now, us designers use something called color theory, and I'm going to go ahead and drop a color wheel right here so you guys can take a look at it. This beautiful color wheel is how designers pick colors that work with one another. Um, we could do an entire series on colors, and we probably will, but for the sake of today's video, we're going to break it down into this beautiful color wheel here with some color theory. Now, there's a few tools that you guys can use. Um, Adobe Color is really great. Canva has some really good options as well. But if you're looking to really want to DIY and do this yourself, the color wheel is a great way to look. So we can do complementary colors, which are colors opposite of each other on the color wheel. We could do a monochromatic pattern, uh, which is taking one color and using tints and shades. We can do a triadic, which is three colors on the color wheel in a triangle. Or we can do analogous, which is colors next to each other on the color wheel. So those are kind of the formulas. So you're going to want to go ahead and pick one of those formulas that you're going to use to construct your color palette. That way you are making sure that the colors that you are picking are working with one another. There's no clashing. There's no craziness. Um, yeah, so go ahead and pick one of those. I'm going to go ahead and list them one more time. We have monochromatic. We have analogous. We have triadic. And we have complementary. Now, really quick on that note, one thing I mentioned with the complementary is tints and shades. Now, just because these colors are on the color wheel doesn't mean you have to use this exact shade of blue or this exact shade of red. You can go ahead and tweak the colors by using shades and tints. Um, so you can go ahead and you can add black to something to make it darker, um, or you can add white to it to make it lighter. And this kind of gives you different um, tones of blue. So like how we have a lighter baby blue or a darker blue that's adding black or taking away black. So that kind of gives you guys some fun tools to use to actually find that perfect shade of blue, if that's the first color you're using, um, to create the color palette. Okay, so now we're on to step number three, and that is how many colors do we pick? What does it all mean? What do we need to do? 
Now we typically, when we do a brand for a client, we'll pick nine colors. Now that is our signature formula when we do client brands. Um, and what that nine colors is, is it's three main colors. So these are the three main colors that you will use over and over and over again that kind of are your colors that you own. So for Doc's design, we have blue, yellow, and a millennial pink. Blue and yellow are kind of like our main thing. We throw in a pink every now and then. Then we have our three accent colors because just having three colors really isn't enough. If you're creating a bunch of stuff, if you're creating social media graphics, if you are wanting to refresh for the fall time or the holidays, having more colors in your palette just makes it that much better for your brand. So we have our three main colors. Then we're gonna want our three accent colors. So these are colors that are gonna be used as much, um, but think like your buttons on your website, or maybe if you have a call to action on a social media graphic, maybe if you have a special social media campaign that you're running and you wanna freshen it up, these three accent colors should work with your three main colors, but they shouldn't be used as much. The last but not least, which is the little special sauce that we put on a Doc's design is what we call our three neutral colors. So these are colors that would mainly be used in background, um, just as like a neutral placeholder instead of just using white or black. It's nice to have some neutral colors in there. And what we typically do is take a shade or a tint of our main colors and work that in as our neutral colors. So that is nine colors for you guys. If you want to go full blown and do it the Docs Design way, I'm going to challenge you guys to pick those nine colors. But if you're feeling a little overwhelmed and you're like, Kayla, I can't even pick one color. Let's keep it to four. Two main colors, two accent colors. So go ahead and pick your main, main color that you're going to own. Think of Tiffany, how they picked their Tiffany blue when they owned that. Or at Docs Design, how we picked yellow. And we pretty much own that. So think of your one color that you're going to own, and that is going to be your main color. And then using our color wheel and our color exercises, pick the three additional colors that you're going to use on top of that. And if you are a Docs Design rock star, you're going to go ahead and pick our nine colors that we use for our own clients. Okay, so now we're on to the final step. It's like, I have these colors, now what do I do with them? So it's great that actually having brand colors, but what makes you a all-star in the brand, what makes your brand be seen as premium, which makes the colors a visual tool is using them consistently. I'm gonna go back to that Tiffany color. If you see that Tiffany blue, your mind immediately is like, ding, Tiffany premium jewelry. If you see some yellow arches in the um, distance, you're like, ding, fries, McDonald's. There are certain colors that brands have owned, and that's because they use them consistently. So because we're spending all this time coming up with our color palette, we don't want to just like be using random blues all the time. We want to make sure we're using that exact shade of blue over and over and over and over and over again. So how do we do that? by writing down our color codes. Now there's a few different ways for colors and I'm gonna talk through three, what they mean and what you need. The first and foremost is the most common um, and this is the hex code. So the hex code is the pound sign or the hashtag if you're a millennial and a string of numbers, a string of letters. This is the color code that you're going to put in your website that you're going to put in Canva to get the exact color over and over again. So if you're using one of our tools like Canva or using one of our tools like Adobe Color, this is the hashtag and the string of numbers and the string of letters that you're going to want to write down. Write down those numbers, write down those letters, and use that over and over again. Now this is for digital. Um, this is for if you're creating a social media graphic, if you're putting the colors on your website. Um, hex code also can be known as RGB. Um, RGB stands for red, green, blue. Now this is how colors are displayed on a monitor are using red, green, and blue. Um, so hex codes usually translate into three um, codes, one for R, one for G, one for B. So that's kind of our first one is our digital realm. The second is when you're printing something. So this is known as CMYK, which stands for cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. Now this is when a printer or your inkjet printer, I'm sure you've had to like swap out the, the ink before in your um, printer or if a professional printer is doing, how color is created is it's laid down with cyan, magenta, yellow, and black in little tiny dots and it makes a color. Now, digital to print, colors can get messed up because when you're seeing a color displayed on a computer versus being printed, it's different, different color codes. So you're gonna wanna make sure you have your CMYK percentages 
for your colors. A great way to do this is to use the Pantone site, which I'm gonna link in the notes below. You can go ahead and use that tool to put in your hex code and it will give you the CMYK codes, it will give you Pantone codes, which is the next thing I'm gonna talk about. Last but not least is Pantone Color. Pantone Color are the special books that designers use to get the exact color every single time. So you guys probably will not have a Pantone book because they're very expensive, but you guys can use the Pantone website and match your hex code to the closest Pantone code. Now, Pantone codes are great because this is making sure that your color is exact no matter the printer you use. Because each printer might have their press um, calibrated a different way. Maybe their cyan's just a little bit more than the other printer, and so your blue's looking a little bit more blue than it should. So the Pantone code is kind of like the universal code that all designers and all printers use. So you can make sure that it's the exact same color. Um, when you look at it, it's the same no matter what. So having a Pantone color is just an extra rock star bonus to your color palette. Okay, for friends, so uh, that's how we craft a brand color palette. We're going to figure out what our brand vibe is so we can put some parameters on what our colors are. We're going to pick a color formula using the color wheel. We're going to go ahead and pick the nine colors if you're a rock star or four if you're just starting out. And then we're going to write down all the color codes so we can use it in a consistent way. Get going. Let me see those color palettes. <laughs> 